Hello, Facebook world, and thank you for coming to episode eight of Secret Pantry Business. Today we have uh, Daniel Dobra with us. Daniel, thank you for having us in your kitchen. Hello, welcome. <laughs> welcome to my humble abode. Thank Here you. you have my beautiful little kitchen. There's a few, few of my things around. Wonderful. Welcome. Come and, come and join me on this wonderful adventure <laughs> of uh, Hugh and Salmon, Hugh and Salmon's Chef's Pantry. Yes, thank um, you so much. So uh, what are we cooking today? Today, today we have a lovely little dish, a dish that has been in my repertoire for many, many years, um, which I learned when I was a young apprentice. It's called uh, roast salmon a la vierge. Now, the vierge sauce is a sauce that comes from the southeastern part of France very Mediterranean, so a sauce which is based off olive oil, shallots, garlic, tomato, and finished with coriander seeds. Ooh. Super simple, super delicious, goes perfect with salmon. Delicious. And where did we get our salmon from today? Hugh and salmon. And we got it, got it. You got it from clams? It, it came delivered from clams fresh this morning. It's absolutely stunning. If you can see it here. Beautiful. Delivered to your door. To my door. That's incredible. Well, yeah. I know, I don't know if anyone's seen Daniel on his Instagram, but he's been doing some great things uh, with doing some home recipes like this, and he's got a full setup with his camera. So we're going to jump into that setup and going to live this recipe firsthand. So, Daniel, put us up in your bracket. So we can see how this is going to work and we can start the recipe. Okay, so here we are. You can see both of your hands. It's like magic. It is, uh, it's hands-free. So we're going to get started straight away on this bad boy. Um, here we have a few of my lovely favourite things of my kitchen. Uh, probably my most favourite possession is my set of scales. Nice. Uh, I use grams for everything. Right. Mills, mills, cups, tablespoons, they can all, you know, go jump in the sink, so to say. Uh, I find recipes a lot easier to deal with and continue and keep consistent with gramages. Everything. Right. Grams are everything. And is there for um, the scales, is there something that you look for in particular? Well, these scales are, if you can read that, yes. waterproof. Right. Um, these ones go up to like 30 kilos, but they're also gram scales. These are very expensive. Yes. Um, I tend to look for, like, unfortunately, scales, you get what you pay for. You buy scales, it costs $3. Well, you're only going to get $3 worth of weight out of them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces that I can't live my life without. Live, live my life without. We have the little Maurice or the little r rubber spatula. Um, also, thermometer. Great. Cannot live life without a thermometer. Um, Preference to digital? As, be pardon? Preference to digital? Digital thermometer, absolutely. Um, preference digital. This is a Trenton, you know, HTC also do good ones. Digital thermometer. The thermometer never lies, folks. Your fingers, like by pinching a piece of meat or like, you know, poking, prodding, your fingers will lie to you every day of the week. The thermometer never lies. Also, good quality whisk, little matha whisk. Very good quality. Beautiful. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. So here's all my bits and pieces. Here's my super retro ghetto uh, electric stove, which has been a nightmare to deal with. I have ruined a few things, but we do the best with what we've got, folks. Exactly. Okay. So without any more further ado, uh, let's get this ball on the road, this show on the road, I should say. Now, um, I'm going to show you one thing which I've always done with salmon. Um, in particular, 
any salmon that I'm going to roast or cook in a pan, I like to do this. Um, and pretty much what it is, we're just going to lightly cure the salmon. Now, cool. we ourselves don't have 12 hours up our sleeve. No. So obviously with the, with the, with the magic of television, uh, he, we've got somewhere prepared earlier. Now, what? You don't have to. You don't have to do this at home, okay. but if I was in a restaurant sense and scenario, uh, pre-curing the salmon as opposed to like brining or anything like that, the salmon in particular, um, it seasoned, it cooks quicker and caramelizes nicer, I've yeah. found. So um, all recipes will be somewhere, I guess, for this. Yes, on our will website. Somewhere, we post them somewhere. Yeah, there you go. So. For this salmon cure, we have 400 grams of rock salt. I've got pink. I've got Himalayan pink rock salt here, um, but you can use any sort of any sort of rock salt. Now we're going to add to that white. Saxa ground white pepper. Oof. That's 26 grams. Now you think it's going to be too much. But it's not, and everything is a okay. We will Let trust just, you. Yes, you, sometimes you just need to have a little bit of faith, a little bit of trust. Okay, to that, we're going to add 125 grams. Well, it says 128, but you know, 125 grams of caster sugar. Now, we're going to give this a bit of a mix. Yeah. Now, here we have. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Gorgeous, lovely, beautiful. Just look at the shine in that bad boy. It's very shiny. So this lovely, gorgeous piece of salmon. Um, now, for the cure, now there is a, a method and a measurement of grams and amount per gramage of seafood, but we're not going to do that. So just got okay. a little small sprinkle in the bottom. Salmon goes in, skin side down, and then, ready? Just cover it. Just cover the bad boy. Now, in a, in a perfect world, this is going to go into our fridge for 12 hours, and I'd see you in 12 hours. But that would be as I said, through the magic of television, here I have something I prepared earlier. Amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, that white pepper's a bit strong. <laughs> so this bad boy here, all we're going to do is, now this has been um, curing for 12 hours. I got up bright and early this morning to get this done. Thank you. So all we're going to do is just a little bit of water. We're just going to wash. All of that. Now, what what you may be able to notice and what you may be able to see is, let me just get some paper towel. Oh, yeah. Props. Coat hangers, folks. <laughs> okay, so what you may be able to see, let me get another, another couple of bits of paper towel to get this bad boy dry. Now. What you may be able to see is the colour of the salmon has intensified, obviously through the drawing out of the moisture and the salt and the sugar, salt and sugar attacking the proteins of the salmon. Um, we've made for one beautiful little tasty bad boy. Fantastic. So we're going to put that to the side for the moment and we're going to get started on this sauce. This sauce takes about. 45 hours to make. No, not really. It takes about 15 minutes. Um, so I have preheated my electric stove, mind you. Got a nice um, nice saucepan here. Yes. And once again, everything in grams, folks. So. Live by the grams. Live by the grams. <laughs> so I've got some gorgeous extra virgin olive oil here. Um, we're just going to put 
100 grams of olive oil. Oh, it's 111. Oh, well. That will do. So, that will do. We've got 100, 111 grams of olive oil. We have here some thyme. This is lemon thyme as well because uh, obviously fish and lemon, things go well. Okay, so the thyme goes in. We've got some bay leaves. I'm just going to get one nice-looking bay leaf, not an ugly one. Maybe one more because they're only a little. Mm, where are you? It's the perfect one. They're all broken. Oh, yeah, lovely. Look. Okay, so, so we have oil, thyme, bay leaf. That goes on to a low heat to start warming up. Beautiful. Now, we have, as I said, everything, every, everything I do gets weighed. For this case, because it's a recipe, you need to follow it. So we've got roughly one big shallot, 60 grams thereabouts. We have 10 grams of garlic. Now, shallot, like so, just straight through, nice large dice. Now, if you can hear in the background, my time starting to sizzle. That's because electric stoves are no good and it's probably a bit too hot. But doesn't matter. So shallot goes in. We've got a couple and questions, go. Daniel. Yeah. First question. Uh, can they use vegetable oil instead of olive oil? Um, well, you can, but the flavour won't be as great. Right. So, so we're looking for the olive oil flavour. This sauce is an olive oil-based sauce. Um, some places they also use butter as well. But the truth is, if you don't have olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. It just won't taste as good, that's all. Yeah, great. Second and question uh, is... Vegetable oil is, yes. <laughs> is, uh, what is a low heat? What do you consider low? Um, a low heat is a very gentle cook, something that's going to sweat the shallots as opposed to fry them. Right. We don't want to put any colour on them. All we want to do is to soften them and make them go translucent. So I've got 10 grams of garlic here that I have sliced into probably two mil slices. Yeah. That just goes straight in. Now, for any of you folks who are out there and also have the unfortunate pleasure of cooking on an electric stove, little uh, little tip and little hack for you. I've got here a wire rack, yeah. and this wire rack is quite thin. All I'm going to do is place the wire rack directly onto the little electricity hob. All that does is just raise the pot up ever so slightly and just just slows down the conduction of heat. Makes it cook a bit slower. Fantastic. So let's get nice and close. Yeah. It's not too pixelated. You see those tiny little bubbles? The little bubbles. Yeah. It's not making a sound. It's not frying. It's not screaming in pain and agony. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> okay. So our shallots are kicking away ever so gently. Now it's time to get to the next step of this recipe. So here we have tomatoes. We need, oh, get out of there, you. We need 225 grams of tomatoes. Now, unfortunately, for any, for any of those folks who are sticklers for seasonality, um, it's not tomato season at all. But that doesn't – but due to, like, you know, the world and the climate and the seasons being not so great, there are actually still some really lovely tomatoes out there. Um, also, uh, we've, come along, we've come along in leaps and bounds in some hydroponic stuff. Now, some people out there are going to 
literally throw throw their phone at the computer to the wall when they just heard what I said about hydroponic tomatoes. But it's the truth. You know, technology, we've moved on. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm just going to get these tomatoes. Now, I see you've got quite a mix of tomatoes there. Are there any particular tomatoes that you think work best or is this just a mix of what you could find? Uh, this is a mix of what I could find, but it's pretty much anything anything ripe or anything that's got good flavour. So I've got some ox heart, I've got some little gold, got some little golden ones, I've got some tiny little baby grape tomatoes, which yeah. are like super sweet. Um, we've got a little black, got some black Russian tomato or Adelaide tomato, however, however you want to call it. So all I've done here is some of these I'm leaving whole, some I've cut in half, yeah, and some I've cut into big chunks. So they're all ready to go. And if we come along here, let's just grit a little slotted spoon. Now, our shallots, they're starting to go translucent. Just a couple more moments, another minute or two. Just going to chuck a lid on that just to speed up the process. Right. While we do that, we can get a few other bits and pieces ready to roll. So here we have coriander seeds. Oh. Coriander seeds are one of they're, – they're almost forgotten about. Unfortunately, like any supermarket, you can't buy these or find these in any of the big supermarkets. Right. Um, which is crazy. Like you find this ground coriander – um, there's like sometimes dried coriander leaf, but coriander seed just doesn't really exist. And the flavor of these is like it's fruity and floral, um, and they add amazing depth and amazing lightness to dishes. So without any, any further ado, what we're going to do with these coriander seeds, these aren't going to be toasted off. They're just going to be very lightly cracked to help release their perfume and all that beautiful floral flavour. So this sauce, there is quite a lot of coriander seed, um, but the coriander seed is what really elevates this to the next level. Right. So I've got a spot. I have a spice grinder here. All I'm just going to do is give this just a super quick. Super quick. So we just give we've just given them a super light crack. So you see that? Oh my god! The yeah. Fucking smell, smell of this is amazing. So some are some are still whole. Some are cracked in half. But some are gone to powder. And that's that. So oh, you see the steam that come off of that? Yeah. So our shallots have sweat uh have and have sweated away nicely and become nice and translucent. Now our tomatoes can go in. Now, the composition of this sauce is pretty much olive oil and the juice from the tomatoes. Right. So all we're wanting to do with these tomatoes is just cook them until the juice until the juice pretty much releases, releases out of tomatoes. So it's softened tomato. While we do that. We can get a few other bits and pieces ready. So shallots have softened, garlic softened, oil's hot, tomatoes gone in, coriander seeds are ready to roll. Now we can do a um, couple of little extra bits and pieces. So to this, we're going to get ready. Um, to this, we're going to add the zest of half a lemon and the juice of also half a lemon. Microplane, folks, in all honesty, you cannot substitute for anything else. Microplanes, save your lifesavers. So we have the zest and juice of half a lemon. 
that's going to go into our source at the very end to help help also enlighten and enrich. Oh. Now, this is where we separate the men from the boys. This is my own personal touch, which, like, when I was first shown this source, I was pretty much shown everything of everything and how to do it, but this is something that I added to along the way. So here we have preserved lemon. Right. So I've got one little quarter, so that's one petal of preserved lemon, as you can see. And we're just going to do a really fine little brunoise of that lemon. Now, as like with the coriander seed, um, I found, well, my, my own addition to this is adding this preserved lemon adds amazing depth of flavour, really takes it to the next level. Yeah. So there we go. That's ready to roll. Lemon three ways. Pretty full, yeah. Yes. Now you say that, yes. Okay. So for anyone at home, so obviously take into account that this is, you know, a really beautiful summertime source. Yes. Um, summertime vegetables. Obviously it's not summertime. Um, we wish. And it is. And it is summertime sadness because we're going into winter. Um, zucchini, zucchini and tomatoes are like, you know, absolute best friends. So we're going to do a little bit of turn zucchini for any of you oh. oldies out there like me who remember spending their apprenticeship days painfully crying into a bucket of canned <laughs> potatoes. So here we go. Ready? Yeah. Like this. It just need very... to come down just a little bit more so we can... Oh. There we go. Wait for it. There we go. Like so. Now, I will be honest, zucchinis yes. um, are somewhat hard to turn for those people who aren't used to turning vegetables. Okay. This is a little turning knife. You can see by the... Little curved blade. So what all we're doing with my fit with my thumb being the guide, just creating a nice little boat shape out of these turn zucchinis. Ah, beautiful. Put a little fanciness on the plate. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, just a, just a drop, just a splash. Now, um, I could sit here for hours and turn zucchinis because I actually find turning zucchinis very therapeutic. You do certain make it look very therapeutic. Finding, certain chefs out there find turning vegetables a painful nightmare. Um, I luckily am not one of those guys. So without any further ado, as per the magic of television, here's something we prepared earlier. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We love a little melange. We did just have so, a question, Daniel. Uh, with the zucchini, yeah. you dispose yes. the pith and uh, slice the skin. Is, is that just to make the shape, or um, you don't Turn like the again? pith? You got rid of the, the pith of the zucchini. Um, well, I got rid of the pith to make it that shape, yeah. just to make it a pretty little shape. Um, but what I will say. Uh, within the cooking process, the centre, like the core, like that part of the zucchini right there, um, you can see? Yeah, I can see right that. Right there. That core is the part that will break down first. It will go quite right. soft. So the outer extremities, if you look at that nice and flow, the outer extremities, they, that stays quite, quite nice and firm. That goes quite soft. So if you were to leave that on in like the – Port Cuisine French world, um, this would be all sloppy and that would still be firm. It right. wouldn't look very nice. It's it's a little from column A and it's a little from column B and a little from column Boris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So oh, so our tomatoes are ticking over beautifully, just ever so nice and slowly. Now, I'm going – to help this along a bit, I'm going to chuck a lid on it. 
Well, while we wait for that to cook, Daniel, we might have a look at your yeah. pantry, uh, oh, something we're God. all here for, get a little exclusive oh, look God. into the secret things maybe, in your pantry. Maybe I should have tidied my pantry. <laughs> maybe well, you should have, but we're here now it and have. it's too late. Yes. Okay, well, we can, I'll show you one of my pride and joys. So I like to use quite a bit of spices. So I've got yeah, nice uh, and all these other little mason jars with all my lovely favourite spices. And when I say forest favourite spices, the spices I use the most regularly. There's some things which I've got up here like in small, tiny amounts in little bags because I don't use them that, that often. Yeah. Um, probably the biggest one I've got here is sweet paprika. Right. I go through I go through probably like I'd say maybe two or three hundred grams of sweet paprika a month. Like I practically bathe in it. <laughs> so let's have a quick look at my pantry. So I can pull this down. So I have it's pretty dark because I live I live in like an old 1950s apartment. So obviously old 1950s apartments um, have old 1950s storage. Yes, yeah, lots so of cupboards. It's not glamorous and it's not spectacular, but it gets the job done. So um, what would I, you say is your yeah, guiltiest pleasure in the pantry? My guiltiest pleasure yeah. is probably MSG, Ooh. to be completely honest. Um, there's like, this is one of my all time favorites. I sort of have a bit of a thing for any heavily MSG laden sort of seasoning or rub. Nostamini is like the Greek version of Vegeta, which Vegeta is the Croatian version of like stock powder. Um, but like Vegeta goes with everything. I, I also absolutely Froth hot sauces, like, but only hot froth like Louisiana style, like really, really vinegary based hot sauces. Right. Um, like, I've got like an extens extensive collection of like stuff. One which I will show you if I can reach it. It's here. Let me get right down. Oh, there it is, right at the back. Oh, this is one of my all time favorites. This bad boy right here. Oh, just keep us still for a second. Yeah, there we go. You see? Yeah. So this is a Filipino coconut vinegar Ooh. that is uh, made out of, like, based off fish sauce and chilies. So it's like a spicy, stinky vinegar. Wow. That bad. Uh, that bad boy is one of the all-time favourites. It's absolutely amazing. That and with like what do you use that on? And that like Filipino food. They literally they they eat like Filipinos eat this on cornflakes. Like, <laughs> they can't get enough of it. Like tuna, it's in pretty much every single dish that they make. That bad boy lives in it. Um, but really, really good with raw tuna. Right. Okay. So, oh. How are we going? Did we so, talk for too long? Let's have a look. No, no, no. We're perfect. So, I'll try and get this in the light. Now, you would have you would notice before we had um, the olive oil was quite clear that we were cooking in. Yeah. As you can see, the olive oil has gone a bit murky, and that yeah. means the tomatoes are starting to release their juice. Right which is absolutely spot on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to remove this, get that out of the way. Um, I'm going to get my bad boy skillet on the go, heating up. And why now, skillet over a fry pan? Well, uh, oh, fuck it. Jesus, that was a touch Ow. blown. No, it wasn't that bad. Um, so this brand, this is Lodge. 
They make, in my opinion, the best skillets. I find skillets to cook with, like at home, because you know the the heat isn't isn't as intense. Um, you don't have the power of a commercial commercial stove. Right. I find skillets they heat up better. You get a, a better even heat. Um, and like the cut the thick cast iron, like if you can see, uh, try and give it. Like that is a really thick pan. This pan probably weighs. Actually, let's weigh. Let's see how heavy this skillet is, and that just gives you an idea of um, an idea of the heat. Because the heavier, so that's two point four two point four kilos of fry pan. <laughs> the heavier the pan, essentially, the more heat and the more energy it can hold. So right. you get better caramelization. Um, better heat retention, and it's just a lot nicer to cook in. And a good skillet, the one thing about, like, cast iron, it will last a lifetime. Like, you know, Teflon and nonstick pans have their place, but stainless steel and and cast iron, that will, like, this fry pan will outlive me. Like, this fry pan will be here long after I'm gone, (laughs) so to say, metaphorically. (laughs) So, long wind to, to long windedly answer your question. That's it. Yes. So now, um, so our sauce vierge is yes. just bubbling away. Um, let me pull up one of these tomatoes. Uh, this one here. Now, oop. See this over the sink. So there, you got our tomato. Ah, oh, look at that squeeze. See the juice. Yeah. Starting to release its juice, and that's pretty much it. I don't really want to cook this too hard anymore. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to throw our zucchinis in? directly into our sauce vierge. We're going to throw our ground coriander seeds into our sauce vierge. Going to give that a light little stir. Now, we don't want to bash it up too much and destroy all those beautiful little tomatoes. We're going to then add a little bit of salt. A little crack of pepper. A tiny amount of sugar. Now, one thing I'll say is when I season things, sugar generally goes in everything that I cook. Because sugar, what? along with salt, I find is also a flavor enhancer. You know, like things that things that have predominantly a lot of natural sweetness, I find you can get more flavor out of them in putting sugar with them because you enhance and you play on the natural sweet notes of right. those items. So sugar and everything. Now, this is one of my guilty pleasures. This is Vegeta, uh, or what I like to call Croatian sea salt. Right. Um, this is a Croatian soft powder laden, laden full of MSG. So a guilty pleasure. Bit of a bit of, bit of Croatian sea salt goes in goes in there. Now. Now, our, to- our sauce vierge is looking fantastic. Just going to put a lid on that. Now, our skillet's heating up nicely. Now, time for the star of the show, the main attraction. Here we have absolutely stunning, stunning, lightly cured salmon. So, what do we got here? 479. So we're just what we're gonna do is one thing about salmon, which I I'm a bit biased as well. Like for me personally, like crispy skin, 
Yeah, it's really good, but unfortunately, what, usually what happens is the chef spends his life trying to attain that beautiful, perfect, crispy skin. Um, just for the cust, just for you to see the plate come back from the dining room with the skin left to the side, and it's like, what's the point? <sighs> so heartbroken. And it's you know. First world problems. So I, what I've done is I've got my lovely little, so traditionally that there would be your portion. Yeah. We're going to cook this flesh side down. Okay. So that is one portion. That is one portion. Yeah. So we're going to cook this flesh side down. Pretty much should do a minute and a half to two minutes each side. So nice Give and quick. That. Nice, super, super quick. We want to serve this. You want to serve this, um, you know, medium, rare, medium. Yeah, great. So, Put it in our pan. So our pan has heated up nicely. A little bit splash of olive oil. Bit of a whip around. Now, just give it a little movement in the pan just as it goes in to stop it from sticking. Now, two minutes. Easy peasy. Just so how, bit, how do we serve bit, this? Just a bit thing. Um, What's how, do serve, how do we serve this, Daniel? Do we serve it uh, as the fillet with the sauce on the side or? We serve this oh. on this bad boy. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so this this, this dish is served on the sauce, so the sauce would go down first um, and served on top. Yeah, great. Okay, so now while that's doing its thing, let's have a quick look. Make sure I'm not burning it. No, it looks, looks pretty good. So we'll come over here. Now our sauce is pretty much ready. So that's... You can see, like, obviously that's been cooking for, what, 10 minutes, if that? Oh, I think we're borderlining 15. No, maybe 15. <laughs> so as the king, it's only, still only just cooked, still quite al dente. So our preserved lemon, our lemon zest and lemon juice gets stirred through. Now we have a quick taste. Oh, oh, my God. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Now. Forum Chardonnay vinegar. Ooh. Just a little splash. This this helps just bring up all of those beautiful, um, all those beautiful acidic lemon notes. And to this, I'm just gonna go just a little spoonful more sugar and a little bit more salt. And there we go. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Is one of my cats. Hi, kitty. <laughs> okay. So we've got three seconds left on our fish timer. Now let's see. Ooh, Beautiful. Look at that. Right? Stunning. Oh, look at that, folks. Gorgeous, that looks gorgeous, great. gorgeous foundation. So just going to give that one more minute. Now, we can pretty much just get this bad boy on the plate, ready to roll. Just, just so you can see how all of that, all of that juice from the tomato and the lemon juice has emulsified with the olive oil. Yeah. And you've got this beautiful, beautiful, rich, yet incredibly light sauce. Beautiful colours too. Gorgeous. It is It is summertime. It is. So just, just make sure all my beautiful little zucchinis, just arrange these nicely.
Oh. Here it, it's done. Oh, that's the fish. Okay, let me get a plate. Now, if you can see that. Yeah. Bit darker in the middle. Lovely, lovely little sear there. Lovely color. Uh, that's now that's probably like rare in the center, but with time the heat will transfer through absolutely. and that'll cook out absolutely stunningly. So here we've got the bad boys. Turn me stove off. Fish dish, fish plate. It's beautiful. That perfectly. Now, because this fish is cured, it doesn't need any extra salt. All of the seasoning, it's already happened. Yeah. Just going to finish this with some lovely Cobham Estate lemon oil. This stuff is amazing. You can practically drink this. Like, <laughs> it's even good on ice cream. That's like no joke. So a really lovely, nice slathering of that lemon oil. And what French dish wouldn't be complete with about with, without a little bit of this, which is chervil, which is also known as the three-star herb. Right. In some circles, like three-star being three Michelin star. <laughs> so lovely little bit of chervil. Chervil also adds um, a lovely little anise note, adding another little balance. Now, like I've made this look fancy, but like truth be told, this is one of the most rustic, like simple Mediterranean dishes you've ever seen. Yeah, like, great. It's not like there's no super hardcore reduction, no super hardcore emulsification. All we've done is um, taken beautiful products, cooked them, cooked them in the most simplest form, and served them together to create an absolute winner. Now. Um, we just got a little bit of basil. Now, my basil, in all honesty, it's had the dick. It's not looking that great. Um, I bought it yesterday. It was looking pretty good. Hasn't fared up too well in the fridge overnight. But it's not for looks. It's for flavor. No, exactly. So. Beautiful. Well. That looks absolutely yeah. delicious, Daniel. And I can see the comments coming through. Everyone is absolutely loving this recipe. So I think they'll be waiting the very second it jumps up on our website, it looks delicious, fresh, nice um, flavour, and also the salmon, just a nice, interesting way to do that um, a different way, not crispy skin, as you said. So thank you so much for having us in your kitchen um, and well, taking us along around for the, the recipe. Thanks for, thanks, for letting me, uh, thanks for letting me make a mess. It's been a... Uh, been lovely having you here. We've you enjoyed being stuck on you the whole time. <laughs> All right, you have a good night. Bye. You too, thank you.